Introduction to Atmel's 8-bit AVR microcontrollers. Welcome to this module on the AVR 8-bit microcontroller family from Atmel. The module overviews the AVR 8-bit microcontroller family with emphasis on a brief overview. The module is 27 pages in length and lasts just over 30 minutes. Atmel's low-power, high-performance AVR microcontrollers handle demanding 8- and 16-bit applications with a single-cycle instruction RISC CPU, innovative PicoPower technology, and a rich feature set, the AVR architecture ensures fast code execution combined with the lowest possible power consumption. The AVR core is a RISC architecture with a CISC instruction set. The device is also a Harvard architecture. The core actually provides a lot of powerful instructions that execute in single cycles. There are around 130 instructions on board in the AVR. Designers can continue to write in C and let the C compilers translate code. Moving forward, its single cycle execution, 20 MHz, yields 20 MIPS, and one of the neatest things when you talk about performance is the 32 general purpose registers that are actually on board each AVR. The AVR was co-designed with AIR. AIR is a very well-known C compiler, and they made a lot of great recommendations with respect to the core design. The registers obviously help a lot. Some of the data pointers really help for code density. Why is code density important? Because if the design has smaller code, the engineer gets to buy a smaller part, so it saves cost. So many things are going wireless today, and so many devices are becoming battery powered, that power consumption is a very important issue. AVR has a new marketing term called Pico Power. Pico Power is a new innovation from AVR and leverages all of the previous technology we have in low power consumption and adds to it. One of the big differences with Pico Power versus the other AVRs is the power save mode. We have completely redesigned the 32 kilohertz oscillator to have a zero power 32 kilohertz oscillator. That's allowing 0.6 microamps in power save with the oscillator running. In full run mode, it can do as low as 220 microamps per MIP in full active mode. These devices run from 1.8 to 5.5 volts. The 1.8 volt device is a true 1.8 volt device. That means that everything works at 1.8 volts. Designers can write to Flash, SRAM, and EEPROM. Atmel is the first to put Flash on a microcontroller. AVR also has the ability to protect your IP, so there are lock bits. The designer can set inside the flash memory that actually make it unreadable to anybody else. Integration is also important when looking at microcontrollers. Even on the small, little AVR devices, designers will still see all the features on the large microcontrollers. Those are things like brownout detection, EEPROM, watchdog timers, debugging interfaces, calibrated RC oscillators, and things like analog references and real-time counters. It lowers systems cost, making the PCB smaller, reduces risk, and lowers overall power consumption while ultimately improving reliability. This is what has made AVR so popular. It runs a 20 MHz, 20 MIPS single cycle execution, Harvard architecture, 32 general purpose register, on a very high performance microcontroller. Not only do you have the speed, but also best in class when it comes to code density. The AVR family is very scalable. Whether the users are writing the code on a little 8-pin 1K flash tiny microcontroller, or put the code on a large 256K flash 100 pin, the code is going to completely port. The software you write on one is going to migrate through the rest of the family. It will help you as you're increasing or decreasing memory densities or changing your designs, 
and it also helps you to reuse a lot of the same code. Atmel AVR cores have two families, Tiny and Mega. The code you write on one works on the other. Tiny is specified that there are small parts, 28 pins and less, and Mega are bigger than that in terms of pin count. There is one other key difference, that the Mega has a hardware multiplier on board, and the small Tiny has the ability to have self-programming flash memory. So in the Tiny product family, there are a lot of different devices all in the same pin count with varying memory sizes. But all of these devices are pin-to-pin -pin compatible with differing flash memory sizes from 1K to 2K to 4K to 8K. Other key features in the Tiny family are listed here. Some of the devices have onboard temperature sensors. The overall family does run from 1.8K to 8K of flash, 64 bytes to 512 bytes of SRAM, and the same on the EE PROM, so onboard EE on the devices. The USI is a serial interface that allows it to run SPI or two-wire interfaces, which is IIC compatible, anywhere from 6 to 20 I.O., up to two timers in the 8-bit space, and some of them have one 16-bit timer as well. It also has five PWMs, some of them, like the tiny 261-461-861 family, actually have a 64 MHz PLO on board so that you can get a high-speed PWM. Some miscellaneous things include brownout detection, on-chip calibrated RC oscillators, watchdog timers, and real-time clocks. Again, it can operate from 1.8 to 5.8 volts. Debug wire is single wire debugging over the reset line, so the user can do hardware debugging on these without giving up four pins for JTAJ. Here is the Mega family. The Mega family ranges anywhere from 32 up to 100 pins. They have TQSPs, MLFs, and BGA package devices. Flash memory sizes go from 4K up to 256K. They also have advanced peripherals like LCD on board up to 150 segments on some devices. Quite a range of products here. In the 32, 44, and 64, and 100, they are pin-to-pin -pin compatible, flash memory densities being anywhere from 16 up to 256K flash pin-to-pin -pin compatible. The SRAM in the Mega family runs anywhere from half a K up to 8 kilobytes of SRAM and anywhere from 256 to 4K bytes of EEPROM. They also have up to four USARTs on board, one or two SPIs and one or two TWIs that are RIIC compatible. In general, it has 23 to 86 IOs, multiple timers, up to four 16-bit timers, depending on the device, and as many as 16 PWMs on board devices. The majority of the parts run from 1.8 to 5.5 volts, though some are 2.7 to 5.5. The Mega family are going to be 16K of flash or larger with 32 pins or more. They have GTAG. If they're 16K or less, they'll have debug wire. ASSP stands for Application Specific Standard Product Devices. These are some of the advanced peripherals in the Mega product line. So USB is big, CAN, and some lighting specific devices, also devices specific for smart battery, and finally Zigbee as well. Here are a couple of the devices suitable for automotive applications. Here we show the part number naming convention for Atmel AVR products. The U is the temperature grade. M is the package type. The 10 is the speed grade. If there is a V or a low voltage part, it would have a 10 for a speed grade of 10. If it had no V there, it would have a 20 for a speed grade of 20. The P denotes a Pico Power device. Atmel provides the hardware tools and AVR Studio. Specifically, AVR Studio is a simulator, an editor, and an assembler. It does have plugins for C compilers, and it manages the hardware tools. 
It does all the updates for the users and it programs the devices. When users open up AVR Studio to begin the development work, rather than having to use a separate C compiler, if they can, download a GCC. AVR Studio is the new integrated development environment for writing and debugging AVR applications in Windows, 9X, NT, 2000, and XP environments. It includes an assembler and a simulator. As far as C compilers go, obviously you have freeware, which is GCC. It's called WinAVR. W-I-N-A-V-R. It's available at www.sourceforge.net, and that's free of charge. It includes the plugin to AVR Studio. The STK500 is a flagship starter kit and supports all of the AVR devices. Anything from the little 8-pin up to a 40-pin PDIP, you have the ability to program over multiple methods and to do JTAG debugging, to do in-system programming, all of these different options, and everything's pinned out.